Good afternoon and uh, welcome to New Student Orientation. Uh, I'm Doreen Campbell and I am part of the admissions team here at Gordon Conwell. We are delighted that so many of you were able to join us today. Uh, it is always exciting for us to see your faces. Um, we've spent weeks, you know, talking with you, emailing with you. Um, so it's always wonderful to see you, if not in person, at least here on, on the screen. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come and spend some time with us. Uh, before we get started, there is a couple of things that we would like you to do for us. Uh, if you've not already done so, please go ahead and add your name and your degree program to You're muted again. I'm not sure why I keep muting, but my hands are nowhere near the control. So we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Just let me know if I mute again. Um, so yeah, if you could do a couple of things for us, um, if you could put your name in the bottom right uh, left-hand corner, I think it is on your screen. If you right click on that, you can go ahead and put your name. And if you put your degree program in there as well, um, that would be really helpful for Bill, uh, who's, who's running the, this Zoom event behind the scenes. Thank you, Bill. Uh, and that way uh, he can make sure that you end up in the correct breakout room for your degree program. So that's your name, dash, and your degree program. That would be really helpful. Um, also, if you can keep yourself on mute, I'm trying hard, hard not to keep myself on mute, but if you could keep yourself on mute for this part of uh, NSO, and uh, please just leave your screen on, as I said, as a, a delight to, to see each, each one of you here. So thank you so much. Well, this day is almost here. You are about to begin your seminary studies um, and we do not take it lightly. Uh, the privilege that it is to uh, be walking this journey with each one of you as you follow the Lord's calling on your life. Um, we understand that it, it is an exciting but it's time, but it's also a, a big step that you're taking. Um, many of us on the call today have sat exactly where you are today uh, as alum of Gordon Conwell. Um, so you will have an amazing team to support you all the way through to graduation. Uh, so as, for mis as admissions uh, bid you farewell, um, I want to introduce you to Anna Grunts. She is the Director of Digital Student Success. Uh, and she will introduce you to some of uh, her team now. Over to you, Anna. Thanks. I'm gonna add my welcome to Gordon Conwell, um, to Doreen's welcome. We're glad that you are here. Um, as Doreen said, my name is Anna Gruntz and I'm the Director of Digital Student Success. I work with the student success team who are here to walk alongside you in your seminary journey. We'll answer your questions, direct you to the right people for whatever you need, um, and pray with you. We'll walk alongside you um, from when you started to when you graduate. So we have um, Dr. Young and Leslie who work out of our Jacksonville, Florida location, and Nakia, Inzu, Carrie, and I who work out of the Charlotte, North Carolina location. But wherever you are, whether you're digital in Florida or North Carolina, um, we're here to help you. This afternoon, we want to we want you to learn about the people who are here to serve you. So first, you'll hear from our academic dean, Dr. Jerry Wheaton, and then we'll have a short video introducing our staff team. Then our dean of students, Dean Anil, will introduce you to our community life, and you'll have an opportunity to experience a taste of our soul care groups with other students. Um, and then finally, you'll go into degree program breakout groups where you'll meet with your advisor and your student success representatives will be there with you. We're glad that you took the time to join us today. Um, and we're excited to walk alongside you as you journey through seminary together. And now we'll hear from Dr. Jerry Wheaton, our academic dean. Thanks, Anna. And hello, everybody. 
it is fantastic to see all of you here this afternoon. My name is Jerry Wheaton. I am an associate professor of New Testament and the academic dean of the Southeast region, which includes Charlotte and Jacksonville uh, locations. And uh, welcome to Gordon Conwell. It's wonderful to have you uh, launching into your studies this semester with us. Um, one of the courses I teach is New Testament survey, which uh, most everybody will take at some point. You may not take it with me, but many do. So hopefully I'll have a chance to get to know you uh, on, a, on a more individual level in the future. So I came to the campus uh, as a professor six years ago. Um, my wife and I had spent 12 years uh, on the mission field prior to that. And prior to that time, um, I was actually a student at Gordon-Conwell at our Hamilton campus. So I know and love the institution well. And I also remember well what it's, what it's like getting your seminary studies started. Uh, it is, uh, as, as Anna said, both uh, exciting and it can, it can feel daunting. Uh, probably some of you are feeling pretty loosey-goosey and relaxed, and that's wonderful. Others of you may be a little nervous and thinking, oh my gosh, <laughs> how am I going to do this? <laughs> um, believe me, I understand that feeling. And uh, as Anna alluded to, everyone in this call uh, all of us and staff and faculty have been in your shoes at some point. And that, I think, is actually one of the strengths uh, that we have as a school from your standpoint. Um, and that, that brings me to the first of two thoughts that I want to share with you. First thought is this. Get to know your faculty. Reach out to your faculty as early as you can um, and get to know them. If they, if they have office hours or virtual office hours uh, or whatever, reach out um, and bring your questions, your thoughts, your concerns. We as faculty delight to walk with you through this stage of life. It's a stage of life when a lot of people come and think, gosh, I'm not really sure what I want to do. And other people set, come and say, I know exactly what I want to do. And 12 months later, they've changed their mind. Um, there, there's just seminary is a season of self-discovery. Uh, so embrace that, right? That's, that's the Lord's leading in your life. Uh, and it's, it's so beneficial to have uh, partners to walk through that season with, people that you can have conversation with. That'll mean other students, that'll mean some of the, the staff that you're getting to know, and that'll also mean faculty, okay, some of the professors. Um, another thing that I commonly tell students, uh, when I first started here a few years ago, several years ago now, uh, I was surprised how many, how often students would say, well, uh, Dr. Wheaton, you, you don't realize I, I'm kind of a, in a different situation from most students. I, I have a job and I'm, I'm involved in, in church ministry and I have a family and uh, I have a lot of responsibilities. And I'm thinking, well, you've, you've just described the profile of about 95% of my students. Um, most of the students in the Southeast uh, come with a lot of uh, responsibilities in life. We're not 20 year olds anymore, are we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, faculty know that. Um, we appreciate that. And so you'll find us receptive, uh, ears open, and ready to, uh, to work with you on strategies to help you achieve your goals while you're with us. Okay, so that's my, that's my first thought. Reach out to faculty and get to know your, your faculty as, uh, as soon as you can. The second thought that I want to leave you with is even more basic and even more important. Uh, and perhaps unexpectedly. Uh, and it's just this, to keep your eyes fixed on Christ during this season. Uh, you're, you're all of you, I trust, uh, earnest believers, or you probably wouldn't be here. Uh, but seminary has a way of ratcheting up the stress sometimes in people's lives. When you add to all those other responsibilities that I just mentioned, uh, master's level coursework, papers, tests, deadlines, due dates. Uh, for some of you, it's been quite a while since you've been in, in a, an educational environment. And so you're trying to remember, how, how do I do this student thing again? How did I do it? Yeah, but the way I did it back then doesn't really work anymore because I've got all this other stuff going on in life, right? Um, stress uh, starts to kind of inch up. Six months in, 12 months in, um, if you're not careful, if you're not intentional, your heart can grow cool, right? And we don't want that. 
And so I want to leave you with a, a passage, a favorite passage of mine from Matthew 14, and the story of, of Peter walking on the water to meet Jesus. You know this story well. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But you know, as, as Jesus is coming, he, uh, Peter calls out to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And there are about 15 different things I'd like to talk about in this passage. <laughs> Matthew, is, Matthew is gold. But what I want to I call your attention to particularly is uh, verse 30. For, uh, verse 30. Um, right? Peter coming out, walking in the water. He, this is a man of faith. This is not a, a, an atheist. Right? This is not a, an adherent to some other. This is a disciple of Jesus. He believes already. And here he is doing this thing, which by rights should be impossible, right? Uh, but the power of Jesus is giving him the ability to walk, to walk on water. Uh, and yet the moment he takes his eyes off of Christ is the moment that he begins to sink, right? And there, there's, there's such an important lesson for us in this. There, there, there is a sense in which uh, the, the seminary season is going to be a season not of hurricanes and tempests, but certainly of a stiff wind uh, and and waves breaking across the the boat. And uh, right, it, it becomes a season of of anxiety, of stress, and so forth. And I've suggested reaching out to the staff, reaching out to the faculty. Uh, you'll learn to reach out even to your fellow students. I hope in time, but even more basically. Keep your eyes fixed upon Jesus. Attend to your faith, to your walk with the Lord, right? I think that that's the most important key to your success in seminary. It's the most basic thing. It's what brought you here, I think, in the first place, the call of God upon your life. But don't let that be crowded out by the busyness and all the other responsibilities of life during this season. That, that, that would be tragic. So with those two thoughts in mind, I want to turn now to a, uh, a series of videos, some, uh, some short video introductions that we're going to show you uh, to acquaint you with some of our staff. Our staff are outstanding because they're not only efficient at their jobs, as you're soon to discover, but they're, they also really genuinely love our students. I've so often felt grateful to the Lord uh, for the staff at Gordon-Conwell because of their love for the students, it, it's, it comes out in so many ways, um, and I've, I've witnessed it through the years. So I'm grateful, and soon you will be grateful too, uh, for the efficiency and the love of our staff. And these videos now are meant to introduce you uh, to the different key staff that are gonna play important roles uh, in your academic journey. Hi. I'm Brad Howell, the Dean of Teaching and Learning at Gordon-Conwell, as well as the Executive Director for the Southeast Campuses, and I teach courses in Ministry and Leadership. As Dean, uh, my job is to make our courses digitally available as well as our library uh, to you as students, where you can access classes no matter where you happen to be. Executive Director, I oversee the day-to-day -day, uh, operations of our campuses, making sure our classes are available as well as resources to uh, you as students to uh, successfully complete your programs so that you can graduate. As a professor, I teach courses in leadership and ministry both online as well as live. Hi, my name is Jim Carlson and I'm the Campus Operations Manager at Gordon Conwell. And I'm so glad that you're here studying with us and following God's call on your life. And uh, I just want to introduce you to the campus and, and the things that you get to do here while you're studying. We have lots of great opportunities for um, a time to get away, to meditate on God's word and to pray. Uh, we have a hiking trail on the campus. It goes all the way around. Um, there's various places you can get to it. We have picnic tables that you can use. Feel free to move them anywhere you want. And uh, we have 
umbrellas you can put out, places that you can sit, get away from the heat, but just meditate on, on, on God's Word and, and your studies. We also provide for you here frisbees and horseshoes, cornhole, things that you can do to relax. Um, if you go down the trail and you walk across over to the next organization, it's called SIM. They are a missions organization. They send missionaries all around the world and they have an 18 hole frisbee golf course. So the students, they've invited us over anytime you want. You can go over there where you can work on your game. When you cross over the creek, then you're on their property. For those of you who like to fish, there are fish in that creek. It comes out of a natural spring. There's bass and catfish in it. So since it's on our property, you don't need a fishing license. So go ahead and fish if that will help take stress off of uh, maybe your church planting class. Hi, my name is Sarah Stone. I'm the administrative assistant here at the Charlotte campus. I work with Dr. Jerry Wheaton and Dr. Brad Howe in the office of the dean. You'll receive communications from our team for things like holidays, events, job opportunities, both local and remote, even housing opportunities and hotels that have discounts for Gordon Conwell students. Keep an eye out for important emails and feel free to reach out if you ever need anything. But welcome, we're so glad you're here. Hi, I'm Dina Nell. I serve as Dean of Students, MDiv Program Director, and Director of Mentored Ministry. As a student, you are my top priority. I come alongside faculty, staff, and administration in building environments that equip you for seminary and for ministry. What this means is that if you ever need pastoral care services, or coaching, or mentoring, you would connect with me. If you'd like to go deeper into community life here at the Charlotte campus, please contact me. If you're an MDiv student, you would see me as your program advisor. And then finally, if you have a degree check sheet that includes mentored ministry, I would be the one to walk alongside you in developing mentored ministry rotations and beginning the mentored ministry process. But whatever your degree program, I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to serving you. And remember, people do graduate and you will too. Welcome to Gordon Conwell. Hi, I'm Chrissy Winston, the Assistant Registrar. You'll be contacting the Registration Office if you have questions about or need help with uh, registering for classes, uh, questions about schedules and our academic calendar, requesting a degree audit or what we call check sheets, submitting academic peti petitions like uh, pass-fails, requesting an extension, seminary policies, and finally, because this will happen eventually, applying for graduation. Uh, registration works in tandem with student success representatives, so they're a really good uh, resource for you to reach out to if you have questions that are related to registration as well. Welcome to Gordon-Conwell. Hi, my name is Anna Gruntz and I am the Director of Digital Student Success and I oversee the student success representatives. They are here to walk alongside you from when you start seminary until you graduate. They will get you acclimated to the systems, they'll answer your basic questions, they'll advocate for you, and they will um, direct you to the people that you need to know. I'm also the person who you would come to for transfer evaluations, advanced standing, and um, helping you to figure out where courses you've taken might fit into a different degree program if you want to change. Our goal is to help you move along the journey until you graduate. Hello, I'm Kristen Tuckage, and I am the International Student Advisor and DSO for the Charlotte campus of Gordon Conwell. It's an honor to welcome you to our Charlotte Gordon Conwell family. We're so excited to have you here. Um, as your DSO, I will be walking alongside you throughout your entire program. So I'm here for you, to help you and to serve you with your international needs. That stems from issuing your I-20s to helping you with your embassy visa appointments. You perhaps want a social security card to get your job. Maybe you have an OPT or CPT position coming up at the end of your program. All of those things I handle here in my office. So um, I'm just here for every element of your international needs. I handle your CVIS record. Uh, with the government and make sure that 
each of our students stays compliant. So I, I really need to stay in communication with you. It's important that we talk to one, one another and we talk to each other about any changes that are being made. So in your life, if you have any baby, if you change your address, I want to know that. Not only do I want to know, I need to know that. I have to report it and see this. So it's really important that you keep an open uh, communication line with me at all times throughout your program here at Gordon-Conwell. Now, on top of that, I'm also um, a registration assistant. So I will be able to help you with registering for classes, maybe picking your classes for each term. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have a degree, a degree requirement waiver or maybe a petition, those come to me and I help process those in our registration office. So um, I just wanna welcome you one more time to Gordon Conwell and I look forward to making this a beautiful educational journey for you. And I'd love to end with, um, with a quote, um, a Bible verse in 1 Chronicles 16, 11. It says, seek the Lord. We are to seek the Lord and his strength and seek his presence continually. So that's my hope that we can do together is to seek the Lord, seek his strength and his presence together continually here at Gordon-Conwell. Welcome to Gordon-Conwell. We are so glad you're here. Um, and we all hope that your time with us is full of fantastic learning as well as growing closer to our Lord and being more and more equipped to do his kingdom work. That's what all of this is all about. I'm Erin James. I'm the director of Digital Live. And our team is here to provide ways that you can take courses that we hope will work with your studies and with your life. We hope to offer you lots and lots of flexibility in how you take your courses. Digital live classes are really just what they sound like. They're live. You meet at a certain time with the professor and with the other students, but they are digital. You have the option of attending digitally, which means something like Zoom where you connect through a video conferencing platform. Right now we do use Zoom for all our digital live classes. We also have web enhanced classes where you mostly work online and you meet scheduled due dates during the semester. And then you meet for a couple of days with uh, the professor and the other students for a residency. And we offer online courses which are completely asynchronous and what that means is there aren't scheduled class times where you meet with the professor and the other students. There are assignments with due dates, but it's not a scheduled time where you have to be synchronously present at the same time as other people. We hope that these are good options for you and that you will be able to have the courses that you want and that you will just do very, very well. Please let us know how we can serve you and how we can make your time here as valuable as possible. Hi, my name is Audrey Whitlock and I'm the bookstore manager and the library assistant here at the Charlotte campus. And I'm here to assist you in any way that I can in the bookstore and library. So uh, if you are not within easy driving distance of the campus, no problem. Just go to gordonconwell.store and you can purchase uh, and ship, have your book shipped to you. Um, in the library, I'm here to help in a variety of ways as well. Um, you can start by going to library.gordonconwell.edu, uh, but if you run into any problems with your search, uh, don't hesitate to ask for help. Um, you can email hllibrary at gordonconwell.edu. Um, we have many print resources as well as ebooks and online articles. And if you have any trouble accessing any of those, I'm here to help. Um, I can also scan um, articles or portions of books for you uh, for your assignments if you need that. Um, yeah. Whether you are near or uh, miles away, I just want to make your experience here as easy as possible and help you flourish spiritually and academically. So uh, yeah, just email me, charlottebookstore at gordonconwell.edu or hllibrary at gordonconwell.edu and just let me know how I can help and welcome to Gordon Conwell. 
Well, on behalf of the Gordon Conwell Library System, I wanted to welcome uh, all of our new students to Gordon Conwell. Uh, my name is David Richards, and I'm the librarian at the Charlotte campus. Uh, one of my particular uh, specialties uh, is in being a reference librarian, uh, specifically with a lot of our digital resources, of which we have a lot. So any questions you might have, any resources you might need, uh, help with research, writing, uh, any uh, of those kinds of things, any way that the library can uh, possibly help you with your classes, uh, we are here to serve and to help you with those. Uh, the library has access to something called the Digital Theological Library, which has over 600,000 uh, volumes and several uh, 100,000 journals, millions of articles uh, that you can be able to access from anywhere that you have internet access. Uh, also, we have a great library team uh, stretched across several campuses that are all uh, available to help you uh, track down and find things, whether it's an interlibrary loan or something that you can, uh, if we don't have a copy of a book uh, here at our Charlotte campus, we can actually get that sent to you from uh, our uh, South Hamilton campus. So uh, we just have a good, a great library team, all very uh, qualified and ready to help you with whatever your needs are. So again, welcome to Gordon Conwell and we look forward to working with you. Welcome again to Gordon Conwell. I want to give you this visual as we start to talk about community life. And here's the visual. Gordon Conwell alums. People do graduate and you will too. And so with that, I want you to think about how you're going to make this journey. How are you going to do it? As you begin classes Monday, and yeah, Monday's coming, we want you to know that you've got this, but you cannot do it alone. You've got this, but you cannot do it alone. And so here at Gordon Conwell Digital, Gordon Conwell Charlotte, Gordon Conwell Jacksonville, community life revolves around connection inside and outside the class experience. And as Dr. Wheaton alluded to and talked about a few minutes ago, inside the class, you'll have the opportunity to be divided into digital groups to explore subjects academically and spiritually. And so can I encourage you, as you get into the classroom experience or the class experience, that when you're in these groups, meet a little early or stay a little late, get to know each other, ask how you can pray for each other, share your stories so that you can see where you join together, where you have similarities and commonalities, you will be amazed at who God hears you with in your groups in the classroom experience. And then outside of the class experience, you can connect with fellow classmates through student groups focused on racial reconciliation, focused on justice, focused on women in ministry, and even geographic affinity. One such student group is the Diversity Council. Kim Weaver, is on the Diversity Council leadership team. And Kim, I'd like to invite you to tell everyone about the Diversity Council, how they can get involved. And, but before you do that, if you would share your degree program, uh, what year you're in at Gordon-Conwell, and then lead us into an exploration of the Diversity Council. Thank you, Gina. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be here with you all and to welcome you officially into Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary in the Southeast. Um, my name is Kimberly. You can call me Kim. I am um, in my second year. You can hear me, right? Okay. I am in my second year at uh, Gordon Conwell studying um, Christian counseling. And I am so excited to be before you today to talk a little bit about the Diversity Council in the Southeast. Um, so just to share, our mission is to intentionally create an atmosphere that invites, welcomes, supports underrepresented students, faculty, and staff. 
Um, and I'll just tell a little bit about why I joined um, because it's important to be able to personalize, um, you know, why it's important to support diversity on our campus. And so um, I am new to the Charlotte area. I moved in uh, the end of 2019 to Charlotte from New York. And um, as you can imagine, I was looking for ways to further connect with um, the campus and just my community here in Charlotte and just with others. And so I learned about the um, Diversity Council, Council through the counseling program. And fun fact, it was actually started um, from the counseling program and Dr. Benitez, who is one of our professors, is one of the advisors along with um, Dina. And so it's important for us um, as counselors to be able to um, just support diverse perspectives and be able to um, counsel from a multicultural perspective. And so that's another reason why I decided to join. But also coming from New York City, as you can imagine, which is one of the most diverse um, cities in the world, uh, I recognize um, in my experience the importance of just being able to, to listen, um, to uh, really just hear from other people's other perspectives, other voices, and to honor that. And as a Christian, that is a part of our call. And so I wanted to make sure that on campus, um, we created a space where people felt welcome, um, where people felt heard and known. And so what better way to do that than by joining the Diversity Council? Um, and so I'll tell you a little bit about some of the things that we are doing and have done. Um, and so we have some staple events. Um, last year, these were successful. So we started an Advent um, as well as a Lent devotional where we invited students, faculty, and staff to write short devotionals to honor the vast and diverse voices and experiences of our community. We also hosted um, two book clubs. And you may say, oh, why would I want to join a book club when I'm in seminary? But um, it was uh, well attended and we were able to really dive into um, the books by Jamar Tisby. I think the spring semester, the fall semester, we read The Color of Compromise. And then we also read his um, How to Fight Racism book in the spring. And then um, going forward, we're just looking for more ways that we can really um, connect, which is really hard because most of us are distance learners. Many of you may not be in the Charlotte area. Some of you may be in Jacksonville. And so what are some ways that we can just cross bridges and really um, make sure you feel welcomed and cared for here? And so one of the things that we're looking to do is um, just a survey of you, just to hear from you and what you would love to see happen during your time at Gordon-Conwell. We're also looking to hopefully do a diversity council conference, which could be a staple event where we bring in um, speakers and hear voices. Um, and just so you know, diversity is not just about your race or your ethnicity, but it could also be related to your sexuality, to your gender, um, to your geographic location. And so we want to make sure that we're honoring all of who we are and our various experiences and making sure nothing goes uncovered. And how do we apply the word of God to make sure that people feel known and loved and cared for? Um, so I'll share, if you're interested in being a member of the Diversity Council, you can email us at Southeast Diversity Council at gordonconwell.edu. If you type this in the search bar and your outlook will pop right up, that's Southeast Diversity Council. And then I also invite you to save the date for our first general body meeting on Tuesday, October 5th at 8 p.m. And so that's Tuesday, October 5th at 8 p.m. It will be a Microsoft Teams meeting. And you can also attend and get to meet some of the other leadership team members, as well as learn more about our plans for this upcoming year. So congrats on your uh, admission to Gordon-Conwell. And if you have any questions or need anything, feel free to reach out to us at Southeast Diversity Council at Gordon-Conwell. Hey, and Kim, if you don't mind, I'm gonna, the question I prepared you for, so I do yes. apologize. That's okay. But if you, could, if you could pass along one piece of advice to new students, what would that one piece of advice be? get connected. And I think I shared that was really important to me just to step out of my comfort zone and just meet people. And so joining diversity council or even a soul care group or um, one of the mentoring programs, 
I encourage you just to, to reach out to one of those um, ministries here on campus and get connected. Hey, Kim, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Well, and Adrian Taylor serves with me in the Community Life Office. And Adrian, if you could tell us your degree program and then tell us a little bit about the other student groups and resources for community life here. Sure, Dina. Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name is Adrienne um, and I'll just add my welcome to everyone else's. We're all just really glad that you're here. Um, I am in the MDiv program and I'm about halfway through. I started um, in 2018 actually when I was still working full-time from Nashville and uh, just took one class at a time and then about a year ago transitioned to Charlotte and um, am full-time now. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I, uh, we do have other groups as well. Um, we have a group for women in ministry. This is a group um, that's relatively new. It just started really last spring. Um, this is open to all women at the seminary, not just those who work in church ministry, but, um, but really any, any woman here at seminary. Um, our mission is really to seek and love God first and foremost, to get to know one another and to form community, um, and then to encourage one another as we all grow in our giftedness and our calling. Um, and so we would invite you, we're going to have a couple of events coming up this fall where we'll have fireside chats with various um, alumni and professors who will come in and sort of tell us their story about their, their journey um, into ministry and their experiences in ministry. Um, those, those are open to men and women. We would love to have men join that as well, um, just to come and hear from, from some of our female professors and, and um, alumni. Um, and then hopefully in, the, in December, we'll be doing a retreat for women as well. So just keep an eye out on, on your email for those um, events. We also have groups for, um, we have an international student group as well um, that's also brand new. Um, and, and then our most recent initiative is um, something called our regional groups. Now, all of you should have already received an email from me about this. Um, if you did not, um, then that's okay. You can just send me an email. Dina just put my, my email in there, in the chat there. Um, but it's not too late to sign up. So what we're gonna do is we're trying to group students by regional locations. Um, and so, you know, and then once we have the groups, you guys can run with it and, and take it in any direction that you want. You can, you know, start a WhatsApp group and, and you know, to have a kind of a running conversation, to pray for one another, to share prayer requests, things like that. Um, you can meet, meet up for coffee if there's enough of you in, in a single location. Um, so this is something that we're really excited about. We want to do something that is fostering community regardless of where you live in the country. Um, so if you have not responded to my email about this or you didn't receive it and you're interested, please just shoot me an email. Let me know um, your city and your state. And um, we have to get those emails from you in order to place you in a group um, because of privacy laws. We can't just share where you are and your email and everything. So if you are interested, you have to let me know. Um, but we're really excited about that. The last thing that I want to share with you guys is the Community Life Hub, and this is something that we've all been working really hard on over the past year. Um, in Canvas, if you are not already familiar with Canvas, you will very soon be very familiar with Canvas. That's where all of your courses are located. Um, but when you log into Canvas, you should all have access to um, something called the Community Life Hub. And what we've done with this is we have really tried to sort of recreate um, a, a student, like a life center, a student, a student center um, in a digital space. So there's a lot of general information on there, like library hours, like, um, you know, where, how to request a new ID badge if you lose yours, um, things like that. There's information about how to sign up for a Right Now Media account. All students, um, professors and uh, staff, all have a free access to Right Now Media. So um, instructions for, for accessing that are on there. There's also a section on ministry jobs. We, put, we post current job openings there. We post um, housing openings in the Charlotte area there. Um, we also have information on all the various student groups and then information on spiritual formation as well. 
So how to join a soul care group, things like that. Um, so any question that you have, it's probably answered in the Community Life Hub. So please check that out and feel free to send us any feedback. If there's anything that's not there that you want to see, please send me an email and let me know. Um, but we are just here for you guys and want to be able to support you in any way that we can. Adrian, thanks so much. And if you don't mind, I'm going to pose the same question to you that I posed to Kim. If you could pass along one piece of advice to new students, what would that one piece of advice be? Yeah, it's such a great question. I, I think um, seminary studies can become such an academic exercise. Um, it can be very easy to get caught up in the, the learning and the reading and the knowledge aspect of seminary, which is great. Um, but sometimes that can come at a cost to our personal relationship to Jesus. And so I think it's so important that you just, um, you know, even as you're going through seminary, make sure that it's not just um, an academic exercise. It's not just something that is in your head, but it's also affecting your heart. Um, and as Kim said, you know, join groups, join soul care, um, but really, really give that some significant attention as you are doing all of this academic learning. Adrian, thanks so much. Kim and Adrian both, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your leadership. And everyone, you have an opportunity to get involved in everything that you've heard about, opportunities to connect with each other inside and outside the class experience through Diversity Council, through Women in Ministry, through your geographic groups and other opportunities that you'll see. And to put in a plug, watch your Gordon Conwell email consistently because all official school email will go to your Gordon Conwell email. So be sure and watch that consistently and take advantage of these opportunities. Not only though, will you find opportunities to connect in the classroom and in the community, but as Dr. Wheaton said, perhaps most importantly, to connect with Christ through spiritual formation opportunities. And we have many, many opportunities. Every Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, we have community prayer where literally students, staff, and faculty from all over the world join together. So that's every Wednesday from 11.30 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. Again, watch your Gordon Conwell email. There's a weekly email that goes out either Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning with that link. There are opportunities for one-on-one -on -one spiritual formation. And then you've heard this term almost about three or four times in the past few minutes, our soul 